In this video, we're going to look at advanced Power BI slicers, including how to use edit interactions, sync slicers, hierarchy slicers, and slicer buttons. Here we have a report showing expenses for a freelance business. We have visuals showing expenses by month, by vendor, and by category, as well as total expenses and average monthly expenses. And we have a category slicer. Our data contains three years worth of expenses. We'd really like to see a breakdown by year. To do that, we'll need to add a year slicer. So we'll click slicer, then add year from our date table. And let's change that to a list layout. We can make that look a little better. Over in the visualizations pane, click the format tool. Make sure the visual tab is selected. Click to expand slicer settings. Then under options in the orientation dropdown, choose horizontal. That changes our slicer into buttons. Let's resize it so that we have a single row. That looks better. Now we can see our expenses one year at a time. But let's say we want to choose a more specific date range. To do that, we need to add a date slicer. We'll click a blank area of the report to make sure nothing else is selected. Then we'll click slicer, then date from our date table. And let's move that up under our year slicer. But wait a minute. Why is our date slicer still showing a three year date range? If we click the different years in the year slicer, all the other visuals change, but the date slicer doesn't. If we click to select our date slicer, we see three icons in the upper right. If we hover over the funnel icon, Power BI displays a pop-up labeled filters and slicers affecting this visual. And here it's telling us that nothing is filtering the date slicer. But if we hover over the icon for a category slicer, we see that it is being filtered by the year slicer. And if we do the same for the vendors chart, categories chart, total expenses card, average monthly expenses card, and the month by month chart, all of those are being filtered by the year slicer. The only visual that's not is a date slicer. So how can we fix this? Power BI gives us a tool that allows us to change how visuals interact with each other. First, we'll click to select our year slicer, then up at the top of the screen in the Power BI menu bar, we'll click Format, and over to the left, we'll click Edit Interactions. Now we see that every other visual on the page displays two icons. If we hover over these icons for our category slicer, we see that the left icon is labeled Filtered, and the icon to the right is labeled None. The bolder icon indicates the one that's selected. So here, Filter is selected. This means our category slicer is being filtered by the year slicer. We can see that's also true for every other visual on the page. But if we look at our date slicer, we see that the none icon is selected. This means that the year slicer is not filtering the date slicer. And that's why no matter what we choose in our year slicer, it won't change our date slicer. If we turn filtering on, we can see that the date range now matches what we selected in our year slicer. And if we change what's selected in our year slicer, our date slicer changes too, just like the rest of our visuals. So one reason a slicer wouldn't filter other visuals is if filtering is turned off. That's the example we just looked at. But there's another reason, and this has to do with the relationships in the data model. Depending on how the relationships are set up, a slicer may or may not filter other visuals. Let's look at that. First, let's remove our date slicer because we don't need it for this example. Now we've already seen that our year slicer filters our category slicer. For example, if we clear our year slicer so that we're viewing all three years, our category slicer shows the option for conference. But if we choose 2020 in our year slicer, the conference option disappears. And that's because we didn't go to any conferences in 2020. Now let's clear our year slicer again and then select conference in our category slicer. We still see the year 2020 in our year slicer. And that doesn't make sense because we can see that filtering is turned on for our year slicer. So why isn't our category slicer filtering the options in our year slicer? If we go to our data model viewer, we see that we have three tables in our model, an expenses table, an income table, and a date table. The lines between the tables show us the relationships. We see that each line has an arrow. Slicers can filter in the direction of the arrow, but not in the opposite direction. Here, since year comes from our date table, making a selection in the year slicer will filter the category slicer, because that's going in the direction of the arrow. But making a selection in the category slicer will not filter the year slicer, because that's going in the opposite direction of the arrow. If we want the category slicer to filter the year slicer, Power BI gives us a way to change the direction. To do that, double click on the arrow and we see the edit relationship window. This window shows us the two related tables, expenses and date, with a few lines of data from each. The date column is highlighted in gray in each table to show that's the column that establishes the relationship. Below that, we have a dropdown showing the type of relationship called cardinality. And to the right of that, we have another dropdown labeled cross-filter direction. If we click the cross-filter direction dropdown and choose both, then click OK, we see that there are now arrows pointing in both directions. And this means filtering will work both ways. Let's try it. We'll go back to our expenses report, and with conference selected in our category slicer, 
we can see that the year slicer now shows only years 2019 and 2021, since we didn't attend any conferences in 2020. Now changing the filter direction to both is generally not a good idea. It can work in a simple data model like this, but in a more complex data model, it can result in incorrect numbers being displayed in the visuals. And the worst thing we can do when creating a report is to create a report that displays bad information. There's a better way to handle this. We don't have time to go into it in today's video, but I've included a link in the description below that shows how to handle it the right way. For our report, we don't need our category slicer to filter our date slicer. So we'll go back to our data model view, double click on the double arrows, and switch the filtering back to single. Back in our report page, now what if we want to get even more specific with our filters? Let's say we want to see how much we spent on software in 2021, but we want to look only at project management software. First, let's clear our category slicer, then move it up a little. To see just project management software, we could add another slicer and add the description field. We can then just click on project management in our description slicer, and our visuals now show expenses for project management software. But a better way to do that is to use a hierarchy slicer. When we have data that is organized as a hierarchy, like our category and description fields, we can just add both fields to the same slicer. So let's remove the description slicer, then click on the category slicer, and over in our expenses table, click the checkbox next to description. If we look under field, we see both category and description. And over on our report, our category slicer now shows a down arrow, or chevron, next to each option. Clicking the down arrow next to software expands the option to show the next level of the hierarchy. And here we can just click the checkbox next to project management, and our report shows only expenses for project management software. We can also change the style of the hierarchy icon. To do that, over in our visualizations pane, click the format tool. Then under the visual tab, click hierarchy, then click expand collapse. And in the expand collapse icon dropdown, we can see there are three different options, chevron, plus minus, and caret. I like the caret icon, so I'm going to change it to that. And now we can see the caret icon in our hierarchy slicer. So far, we've been looking at slicers on a single report page. But what happens when we have multiple report pages and we want our slicer selections to carry across all the different pages? Well, Power BI gives us a function called sync slicers that allows us to synchronize our slicer selections across multiple pages. That means if we make a selection on one page, that selection will carry through to all the other pages of our report. Let's see how that works. First, let's clear our slicers, then turn off edit interactions because we don't need that anymore. Then we'll click to select our year slicer. And now we'll click view in the menu bar and then sync slicers. And over to the right, we now see the sync slicers pane. The sync slicers pane shows a list of the pages in our report. In our report, we have two pages, expenses and income. Next to each page are two checkboxes. The first checkbox shows whether sync is turned on for the slicer on that page. And the second checkbox shows if the slicer is visible on that page. One of the side benefits of the sync slicers function is that if we're creating a slicer that we want to appear in every page of our report, we only need to create it once. For example, our expenses report page has a year slicer. But when we go over to our income report page, there's no year slicer. To add a year slicer to income, rather than create it from scratch, all we need to do is go back to our expenses page, click to select the year slicer, then in the sync slicers panel, click the checkbox to make the slicer visible on the income page. One thing to notice here is that when you first turn on visibility, Power BI automatically also turns on sync. This only happens the first time. If we turn off both and turn on visibility again, the sync checkbox remains unchecked. So now when we switch over to our income page, we see the year slicer is there. Let's click on 2021, then switch back to our expenses report page. Here we see there's nothing selected in the year slicer. And that makes sense because if we click to select the year slicer and look at the sync slicers pane, we see that sync is not turned on for either page. To sync our year slicer, we just need to turn sync on for both pages. We can see how convenient using the sync slicers function is, especially when we have many pages in a report. Now, if you're wondering what the difference is between using sync slicers and using a report level filter, watch this video next where I'll show you the key differences between using slicers to filter versus using the filter pane and how you can use them both together for truly powerful results. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, 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 oh,